It is not a computer, you know, it's not a full, I mean, it is a computer, but it's not going to be a replacement for me for a computer because um, I need to be able to type. And while there's a virtual screen, board, screen there's not an actual uh, screen on here. Uh, you can type with your thumbs, uh, but it's kind of big and you can't put it in your pocket, but you'll carry it around. It'll be another thing that a lot of people carry around. As with a lot of Apple products, it's also pricey. So there's a lower level price and an upper level price. As with a lot of the things, if you want to really make use of it, you'll want the upper level, better quality product. And I just don't have the money to get it right now. I was late to the iPod, I was late to the iPhone, I was late to the Blackberry. I understood how they worked, how they fit into people's lives, but I wasn't ready for them. I say, before you adapt a new piece of technology, it should fit into your life flow and your workflow. Otherwise, it has no use. Uh, until they both make sense. And the good news is it is so early that we can try and wait till other people test it out first and then you find a reason for you to use it. It's very hard to predict saviors in advance. You know, that is not how life works. Um, uh, apart from Jesus Christ, I don't think many people were, there were not prophecies about people coming or uh, you know, that's not the way life works. Somebody comes, they have, nobody predicted Google was going to do what, that Google was going to come, that Facebook was going to come. So I think looking for saviors like that is not a, is a waste of people's time. Journalism is changing not because of this. It's changing because of everything else around it, including everything from social media to people's access and attention span, access to information. Uh, netbooks have changed the way people are getting information. The, the Blackberry has been, you know, so journalism is always in flux. What people don't realize is that journalism has been in a state of confusion and flux for a hundred years. And that is a natural order of journalism, that it's not, it, it, people are constantly changing. And if we don't panic about it, we'll be okay. The, what's broken is not the demand or the need or the love of journalism. That is not what's changed. What's changed is the business models have been an issue. Friendly, who is a leading American journalist and was uh, the character that George Clooney played in Good Night and Good Luck, uh, he used to say that television makes so much money doing its worst that it has no reason to do its best. There's no incentive to do its best. Similarly, because journalism was making so much money, they didn't have to innovate. They didn't have to try new things. Now they have to try new things. I say to my students uh, that it is very early, so be open-minded about technology, about ideas be a permanent learner. I tell my students, you're graduating in, in, in a couple of weeks, you're leaving from Columbia, but be a permanent learner. There are a lot of people who can do the traditional stuff, but don't know the digital. There are people who know the digital stuff, but don't know the traditional. One of my colleagues, Sig Gisler, who runs the Pulitzer Prizes, came up with a great term, the tradigital journalist. Tradigital journalist, that is the traditional journalist with a digital overlay. And if you can have, bo have both, you're going to be fine. Anybody can teach you how to do Photoshop. Your 12-year-old niece can teach you how to do Photoshop. But she doesn't know how to apply it in a storytelling, narrative, conversational manner that can help convey valuable, timely, relevant information. That's what journalists can do. <laughs>